This piece is called The Derogate, and I think it's incredibly fitting that it's being spoken from a cage. I've been told men are not born criminals. That is the system which makes us so. The same which makes men prisoners, the same which makes us wanderers. Well, I have found that my system has made me a prisoner, in my own home no less. Unwilled it came to me, and the will it has developed now is acting without reason and blind to consequences, out of my control even when I believed otherwise. Well, I also believed we were born free. What remedy the lesson to me is this machine, my enemy, my terrible, terrible terrogopy. I know it sees me, it plans, it waits. Its awareness brings us here, alive, in its turnstile wonder and glory, with amber knobs and steel pegs, motions of twists and torsions abound, really wanton and wound, features carved immaculate on its face, sprung and hammer weighed by sprockets speak worlds of its purpose, and of course I'd listen. I consider myself a modest man, a gentleman when necessary, rational by tempered reason, with a curious nature and an innovative heart. We are all inventors of kind, but this is not me. This is not who I am. I will tell you when it first arrived, and arrived it had to, for it couldn't have been made by me. From what I can tell, its assembly is beyond my skill. Perhaps in a dream I could have, but if I had, I know not how I built it. Should it ever break, I wouldn't know what to fix. In fact, should it be broken, I'd never know at all. I dare not to think of it that way, no longer. I refuse to give it power. It wants power. It's the symbol that craves it, craves maintenance. If it had its way, it would propagate itself perpetually and perdurable, permanent, permanent in purpose throughout my workshop, replicating to draw the lines to picture for me my mortality. This is our impotence to know. Though we shall sharpen our growth, I am halted by this surreality I'm faced with every morning. Each night, the night is endless. Each day, night never falls. And each waking moment, it's there with me, out for me. It is my hunter, my beast, it is seeking my allegory demise. When sunlight hits it, its mercurial vials and gunmetal filigree will blossom and unfurl as it awakens piece by piece like a jigsaw abomination, creating from itself single things. Perhaps from the scraps of my other projects. This was my theory after a time. The rejected, unfinished, halted remnants of innovation, these were its components. Let there be light, and so there was life, and for a time it was deviant. It went up without a sound in the long night past long count. It's not some idea of imagined tulpa worthy of that name, but of unkind metal and true burnished gear, quietly sitting and patiently. I walked up to it that first night, approached it in the silence. It did give to me, rolled out like a red carpet. I ran my hand along its spine and felt our cells shudder. Sleeping little that night, I took my coffee and spent the time studying it, disassembling it, puzzling about its origin in a million pieces about the floor, drifting in and out, softly waking, hardly dreaming. And when I woke at dawn, the machine bolted fast and tight, stood together as one piece, polished and proud, defiant. I tampered with it the whole week. I readily knew this was no prank, though to be sure I feared mentioning it to my friends, and straining my eyes to read the notes I'd written the night before, now sporting words and phrases which do not exist in language. Diagrams I knew I made became incomprehensible in my waking. There was everything left. And what have I found? What of its nature have I surmised? Only this. Make it no noise except on a Tuesday when its ding bells whistle and ring. Peeping and popping, it fills the room with a din so bitter and trite. Chime seven times, each on the hour, groaning out melodies in devilish deviation. Hitting pitches whose thresholds would be beyond recognition. In listening close to its glass metal web, you'd hear voices of what could have been. Whispering in silence, teasing me with hypotheticals, darting through and between the music, not the noise. A well-oiled machine would churn with envy when held against its distrocities. With a thrashing, trembling spasm of its cogs and relentless twiddles of its coils, it lives as I am here in my cage, caged, lay dying. It moves throughout my house without moving. I run to the pantry and it sits in the kitchen, escaping to the bathroom. It lies in the bedroom. It doesn't follow me. It can't. It simply is in all places at once. Escaping one afternoon through the basement window, 
Since it sat there beside the front door, I stayed away for a whole week, frequenting the city limits, begging on the streets for food and licking gray water off the floor. I found the rivers, saw the bridges, but I couldn't cross. I couldn't tear myself away. They are so close to lands beyond. I saw my window when I saw it pass. Broken, I walked home. Sure of my fate, I was partnered with my tenant. The hellish partner which showed me the void and offered to take me there. My machine, my terrible, terrible telltale engine. The hellish loom. Does it weave control? Does it weave discipline to look into its maw? And quit something which gives no warmth and eerie chill? What does solitude feel like anymore? Haunting, I assumed, would have been saved for the dead. The dead who still have things to say and who know how to listen. Not this fascist machine that has never lived a thing which has to bind its voice and by my will I won't let it find mine. I won't let it. Assuming it was made for a reason. Self-willed or willed by myself, by humanities or the spaces in between. Something else I've not thought of perhaps. But a reason. For all machines are made with a reason. Designed with a purpose. Made for some thing or the output of a thing. An aid, a tool, a creator or destroyer of the self in itself. A divine extension of man's hand or imagination. <laughs> a pulsing of my mind. Its heartbeat steals mine. The sun is rising, the sun is setting. What am I doing? Are we giving into it? Is it swallowing? Head ages, arch bleed, my wheel shattered on the floor, cutting into my feet as I tiptoe titanium tree stumps I will give to myself. Tonight, no, now, I will call it love. It can love if it's capable of anything. I don't doubt it. It doubts me, my human body. It's trying to teach me permanence. It is my father lesson. It is my lecture. It is my book, my family, my scribbled paper, Eureka, a sketch of things to come, a dash of anguish, and three pinches of fate. It cooks what I give it. No soul engine, no imprint. It gives me no choice. That fiend, that fool, that freakish thing in my house, which knows all and knows where to look, and I am so sure of what it can see. My god, my divinity, my terrible terogopy. Tonight I sleep beside it. Tomorrow I will wake as one with it. The house is fire and the lab is torn. My industrial womb with children yet unborn. All my steel foods, you will live and cease the sunlight within me. With my asp as your kindling and my self-given soul, given again my only last and only sacrifice. So take me. Take me and tell me something sweet. Something before it's over. My love. My truest. My honest, awful, tenebrous, terrifying, Jerocco P. Andrew Brooks.